thanks for jumping back on again with me. Hope that you're um, enjoying having some class options and we'll keep uh, renewing these a couple times a week for you as often as we can. Um, so here we are again, we're gonna do a fun flow today. This flow uh, has a lot of changing direction and changing um, the sides of the body that we're working on, lots of kind of moving around. Uh, so these are the types of things I like to say that are just as good for your body as they are for your brain. It's gonna force you to think here and there, not too hard, but a little bit about uh, how you're moving and what's coming next. Try not to get too far ahead of yourself at any point, but um, there's a little bit of thinking involved with this one. So with that said, if something gets over complicated or you're just feeling uh, like you need to slow down or the, the movement's too quick or it's frustrating you, take a moment, find your breath, make sure that you are in fact breathing. That's the number one reason we tend to lose our way in our yoga practice. And then join back in and take it slower if you need to, modify the postures, all of that is available to you as always. So, let's get started. We're gonna begin in child's pose. Any version or variation of this posture is welcome. I'm gonna start in a kind of fancy child's pose where you take the knees wide apart and then I'm gonna cross my arms like this. So just one elbow over the other. And as I come forward, I'll wedge those elbows in right underneath my heart center. It takes a little fancy wiggling. And then I'm gonna bring my booty up. My butt comes off my heels so that it really does feel like I'm just leaning all my weight into my arms. Now, if that's too much for you, just take a classic relaxing child's pose and breathe for a few moments. Give yourself this opportunity to slow down, get settled, find some stillness, find your breath. Let your body start to surrender and relax a little bit. And then begin working on deepening and lengthening your inhales and exhales. This is your most important job, is to smooth and steady out the breath. If you're in this shoulder opener with me, we're gonna release the arm closest to the body and swing it to the outside. So just rearranging the cross of the arms, Right back in again, lifting up slightly and leaning forward. And if you're comfortable breathing through your nose, you can start to direct your inhales and exhales in and out through the nostrils, past the lungs, and try to breathe down deeper into your belly. Three more. Smooth, steady, satisfying breaths in, feel all the way up. Exhale, empty out completely. Don't start your new breath in until you're totally empty from your exhale. Might even be a little pause there. And then fill up again. Last time, breathe it out. All right. And then release. Untangle the arms if you need to. 
Then we'll shift up and find each other on all fours. Step the knees in. Let your spine move around in a couple different shapes and ways that just feel pretty wonderful to you. Loosening up back of the neck, shoulders, hips. Giving everything a little swing, sway. Chakra Vakasana, that's cat-cow movement forward and back. And we'll build our way slowly but surely up into your first downward facing dog. Take some time to warm up the backs of your legs, loosen up your knees, your ankles. Again, head, neck, and shoulders. You've taken your body to an inversion. That just means that your head is lower than your heart, and so it's always a good opportunity to breathe even deeper. Get some fresh oxygen to your brain. And then bring a little gaze forward, <coughs> excuse me, and walk your feet up behind your hands. You make it to the top of your mat, just allow the upper body to relax. Keep it loose. Maybe a little rag doll feels good. Otherwise, fingertips and palms on the mat. Walk them from side to side. Notice how the weight shifts back and forth between your feet. And you can feel the stretch change along the outside, inside of the legs. Reverse roll and stack, rising slowly as you reset the spine, bring it all the way up to stand. And give the shoulders a couple of rolls back and down if you need to. Encourage some length in the sides of your neck and up through the crown of your head and then draw your palms to press at your heart. Samas Titihi, equal standing pose. Root through the toes and the bottoms of the feet. Lift up through the crown of the head. Set an intention or a dedication for your practice if you have one. Or maybe just take a simple moment of gratitude here. Think of something that you're happy and grateful to have in your life. dedicate our practice to that. Hands at the sides when you're ready. Good. Here we go. We're going to start with a sun salutation and this is a fancy sun salute. It's going to have some extra bells and whistles to it. So come along for the ride. Arms up and over. Rigva Hastasana. Exhale. Dive to the bottom. Uttanasana. Good. On your next inhale, right arm reaches up. You take a little twist to your right. Notice you might bend one or both knees a little or a lot. That's okay. We're just warming up here. On your exhale, keep the twist, step your left foot back. Going into a nice deep lunge, roll the heart center back and open. You can drop all the way onto your back knee if it feels good. And breathe three, two, and one. Hands come down. We're going back to downward facing dog. Exhale completely. Take your right hand to your left ankle and twist under your down dog. Look up and underneath your left arm and breathe. Three, two, and one. Inhale, both hands back to the front of the mat and shift toward a plank. Top of a push-up position, inhale here. Exhale, lower. Chaturanga Dandasana, halfway or all the way. Up dog or cobra, pull through. Ah, there's a nice stretch. From your heart center, or even better, your chin to your belly button. Feel that front side body open up and then back to downward facing dog. Good. Take a look forward. Step, walk, or hop back to the top. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Sit back, Utkatasana. So we combine a little element from sun salutation. Be here, fierce pose. Hips drop further down. I'm drawing my palms together. You're welcome to keep yours apart. 
building some heat and intensity, especially here, along the hip flexors, low belly muscles, low back muscles kicking in. Two and one. Stand up, stretch out. Big inhale at the top and exhale, dive. Back to the bottom. Left arm swings wide open. Hold the twist for a moment. And then step back with your right foot. Taking it into dragonfly twist. Lower onto the back knee if you fly. If you're off your back knee, then really push through your heel. Right leg is strong, quads and glutes engaged. And release. As you come down, hands find the mat. Step back to down dog. And then left hand goes over to the right ankle, calf, or just somewhere along the outside edge of your right leg. Look under your right arm and breathe. Three, two, and one. Hands to down dog, inhale to high plank. Exhale to low. Urdhva Mukha, Bhujangasana, Cobra or Up Dog. Back to downward facing dog. Let's do it again to the top of the mat. We're speeding up just a tad to connect the breath and the movement. Inhale, rise. One breath up. Exhale, one breath back down. Right arm reaches up, inhale. Exhale, left foot steps back. Stay for the breath in. And then we're going to release. Now, if you're fancy, you can release to down dog without ever setting this right hand down. I'm going to step back and grab right for that ankle, heel, calf muscle, whatever you can get. Look under your left arm. Good. High plank. Shift out and lower down. Chaturanga. Urdhva Mukha on the inhale. And back to Adho Mukha on the exhale. Gaze forward. Back to the top again. Half lift and fold. Urdhva Hastasana. That brings you up. Uttanasana takes you back down. Round my left side. Reach into the twist. Exhale. Step back to the lunge. Take one more deep breath here. Now I'm going to make sure my other right hand is planted. And I might not even set my left hand down as I step to down dog. Cross under and look. That's just an option. Remember, you can always use your hands as much as you need. Two and one. Forward. High plank. Exhale. Down to the bottom. Jodorak. Up dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. Breathe in. And up. Okay. Once more through. Here we go. We'll be nice and warmed up. Lengthen. And fold. Reverse and rise. After this, we're going to build a really big flow. One time through slow. And then we'll connect it to the breath and movement. And move in a vinyasa. Lengthen. All right. Right arm comes up here. My back. We're going to twist to the right. You got it. Step back. Sink in a little bit deeper. Good. Left hand is planted firmly. Make that transition swing under. And then release. Out to a high plank. Exhale, lower. If you want to reverse here, you can pull through up dog. You can reverse. Back to Chodorama. Push high plank. Bend down dog. All of the exhale out. Up to the top of the mat. Breathe in. Length. Exhale, fold. Last time, we're the Hastasana. Squeeze your legs together to support that baby back bend and fold. Left arm reaches out. Right foot steps back. Hold the twist. And then release. Flat right palm. Left hand goes back to right ankle. Breathe in. And release. Exhale, hands on the ground. Take your version of a vinyasa here. You've got the option to double up. You've got the option to modify and just keep it low. Remember, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose, doesn't mean it's any easier. It's actually more of a strengthening posture than up dog. Find your breathe downward facing dog eventually and step hop or jump through to a seated position. This flow begins on the ground and ends in a big balance posture. So we've got some work to do between now and then. 
I'm gonna give you a couple moments in each posture this first round, and then we'll speed it up, like I said, and move through vinyasa style. If you need a little sip of water or anything else, go right ahead. Right shin is in front of the left. So right shin is closest to the front edge of my mat. I'm gonna bring my hands out front and just take a little fold over the legs. Check in with the hips here, check in with the low back. Relax the back of your neck, head is nice and heavy. All right, on your next breath, then you're gonna walk your hands to the right and just pause there, take a nice deep fold. Left side of your back is what I'm hoping you're feeling right about now, lat muscles there. Keep your right hand on the ground, peel your left arm up, leaning into more of a side body stretch. Take it over the top on your inhale, land on your left hand, right arm comes up. Exhale, both hands come down to the ground and you pause and stretch over the left side. Hand over hand, we'll walk it back to the middle. One more exhale here, let your elbows relax, forearms relax. <sighs> Deep breath in, I'll bring my gaze forward. Slowly, the first time through, get the hang of this movement because it's gonna happen a lot. I'm gonna pull up onto my knees. So I just lifted my butt up. Now from this position, I'm gonna slide that left leg, my back leg, back into pigeon. As my hands walk in, I might make a quick little adjustment just to get that right knee, shin, and ankle coming across the mat at an angle that's appropriate for your hips, and then take it down. If you don't know what's appropriate for your hips, if you have pain in your knee, you've gone a little too far with the angle of your shin. So keep your ankle bone, your right ankle bone, back here underneath your left frontal hip bone. That's that little bony notch in the front of your pelvis. And that'll keep you centered in the posture and also keep you from going a little too deep. Let's breathe for a moment or two here. So we found Ikapadaraja Kaputasana. That's single-legged king pigeon pose or what we often call half pigeon. If your head is hanging heavy, some neck rolls here always feel good. Or if your forehead is on the ground, then just rock the forehead back and forth. Keep working on loosening up these tight neck muscles. Especially for those of you who are on your computer all day. Or if you have any other kind of sort of repetitious activity that you do that brings your gaze forward and down. You'll, you'll feel how tight those muscles are, especially when you try to bring your chin into your chest a little bit. Unclench your teeth, relax your jaw, and then inhale, press up to your palms, walk your hands in. We're transitioning here to three-legged dog, and that means I'm going to press through my hands, curl my back toes, left toes under, right legs going up, into three-legged dog. Send it high, give it a little shake out. Option to open the hip up here for a moment. Let your knee bend, and again, look under your right arm like we were doing in our warm-up. You're gonna close and square the hips and take a big step all the way up to the outside of your right hand, wide. Foot's outside, sink in, runner's lunge. I recommend putting your back knee on the ground, but you don't have to. Stay on your palms, or if you're a little bendier person, you might drop right down here onto the forearms and breathe. Again, every posture is going to get a few moments.
Could you twist a little bit? Absolutely. Put your hand up here on your knee, work on tucking your left hip down and laying on your outer IT band or outside of the hip there if you want more stretch. And then slowly release, back up to your hands. Good, tuck the back toes again. Left foot steps up to the same position as the right foot for a big squat. Here we go, malasana. Control that movement by pulling all the muscles below and behind your belly button in nice and tight. If it's too much to drop down, put your elbows up here on your knees like I do. Stay right there, you might feel good to kind of shift around. If your hips will allow you to drop in deeper, then elbows on the inside of the knees. Keep squeezing, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, and breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hands down, left foot stays, right foot steps back. I told you, there's a lot of changing feet and direction. Now, as this right foot goes back, I'm gonna drop down onto my right knee. Kneeling on the right knee and swing my left leg open to modified side plank while she stops. So I'm going to pivot open to the side and then just open it up as much as it feels good. You can reach your left arm forward toward the sound of my voice. Slowly, on your inhale, we're going to bring the chest up and come to both knees. So I'm facing the long edge of my mat now. I'm going to lift up, come to both knees. Hands find the hips. Or turn the fingers down and support all of your low back. And just take a gentle little camel preparation posture. You don't have to go all the way into that epic ustrasana back bend. Just enough to open up. And then you're going to release, and now we'll go the other way. We're going to fall on the left hand, shoot the right leg out. Modified side plank here. Could you float that right leg? Sure you could. You'll have another opportunity to do this, so don't worry. Keep breathing. Three, two, all right, and one. Now we're going to pivot on our right foot. So make sure your right foot is back down on the mat. And we're just going to turn and pivot on that foot as the hands come around. We'll lift up and take it to plank, facing the back of the mat. High to low, Chandra Abhinandasana. Abdha, Cobra, option to reverse it if you want to. Take it all the way back up. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Hello there. Step walk or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen and exhale to fold. Bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana again. Hips drop low. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Pause for four. Deeper if you can for three. Squeeze the knees together. Two and one. Stand up, stretch out. Big dive all the way down. Half lift and lengthen, just straight up the middle here. And one more time, step, walk, or hop. Back and move through. If you're hitting your fill of vinyasas, you can skip those anytime and just stay in down row. You're going to step, hop, or jump to the top of your mat and sit down. I'm going to flip back around here. It's, but you're facing away from me, so you just have to trust me. Left leg is in front. You're sitting in a cross-legged pose. Left shin is in front. Walk your hands out front and breathe. Fold. Stretching, in particular, rotators, so big, juicy outer hip muscles and glutes, and lumbar spine, low back. We're going to intensify that as we walk the hands to the left a little bit, and we'll feel that low back stretch now wrap around. On the right side, we'll start getting a little bit of that TFL, lower quadrant, of the lumbar, maybe 
can even feel the stretch in the intercostals, along the ribs, a little bit of obliques. And let's bring the right arm up. Remember, this is just leaning into a side stretch and cross-legged pose. Then we go over the top on the inhale, we land on the opposite hand, and we stretch the left side leg. Exhale. Take it down and fold over the right knee for a moment. And then hand over hand, you walk it back to the middle. Big exhale here. Here comes our transition. On the breath in, we lift the butt and shift forward and we shoot the right leg back behind us to pigeon. As you wiggle back onto your mat, make the adjustments that you need. Come on down and breathe. Left side, Ekapadaraja, Abhutasana. That half pigeon again. Perfect time to check back in with your breath. And then when you're ready, walk your hands in slowly. Two flat palms, tuck the back toes. Left leg goes high, three-legged dog, bend the knee, open the hip there if you need to or want to. It's always optional. As we get going through this on our next round of flow, you could definitely flip that over if need be. Big step forward comes next. Left foot outside the left hand, runner's lunge position. So if you haven't caught on, <laughs> there is some hips involved in this flow today. And we're really working all the way around the hip girdle. Along the inner creases here, hip flexors. These are, um, these are the culprit when we're shuffling around out there on the icy snow or when it's really cold and we just kind of try to keep our movements as small as possible, these babies get really tight. All right, off that back knee first. Engage a little belly, step up and squat down. Malasana here in the middle. We breathe for five. Modification to bring that up a little bit or another nice modification is if you can just hold on to this front edge of your mat. And then that gives you the opportunity to really lengthen your spine, sit up a little taller, take some of that roundness out of your shoulders and your mid-back. Two, and one, left foot goes back. Drop onto your left knee. Okay. Swing it open, right leg sneaks back behind you, and there's your side plank modified. Now if you're thinking to yourself, couldn't I just straighten my left leg and roll that to a full side plank? Sure, <laughs> but you're gonna have to uh, come out of that in a creative way to get to your knees though, right? Because remember, camel comes next. So just maybe stick with the modified version because it's gonna work better for your flow. Here we go, up to the knees, we're facing the long edge of the mat. Hands catch the low back. Inhale, heart center up. Imagine bending over a giant wagon wheel here. I've rolled it up against your back, so you can't just go backward, right? You have to go up and over. Heart center nice and high. Two. And one, chest comes up, fall on your right hand. Extend, find the other side of Vashistasana. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Now we're getting ready to turn. We're almost back to the front of the mat, right? So don't pay attention to me. I'm just going to shift around so that I end up meeting you here. Gaze goes down. Push into your rear foot and pivot on it. High plank. There you go. Lower and you're back to the beginning. Front of the mat, tuck the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Gaze forward, we're gonna skip the full vinyasa, we're gonna jump right through to a seat, right chin in front, flow with me. One breath, one movement. 
forward and exhale. Now this time, swing to the right and just make a nice, big, smooth circle. No stopping, just all the way around. And exhale, back into a little bow. Lift your butt and shift your weight forward, slide your left leg back. Inhale, bring your chest up. Maybe you touch your fingertips to the mat and open the heart here. One bow down on your exhale. Press into flat palms, curl the back toes under. Inhale, brings you right to three-legged dog. Push up, send it high. Flip that dog over if you want to. Take it back around. Step wide of your right hand. Now just step. Exhale, let your hips fall for a moment. Step the back foot up. Exhale really deep into the squat. Hands come back down, right foot steps back. Drop to the right knee, swing the left leg open. Modified side plank, maybe you want to float the foot, maybe you want to capture the top of the foot or the ankle. Kick it open into full moon variation. As you release, think both knees on the mat, that's where you're going. Both knees on the mat, stand up to the side. Swing your big toes together if you need more foundation and take your camel pose. If you're ready to find your heels, now would be the time to grab back for the heels and really open the chest. Inhale up. Land on your left hand. Shoot your right leg up. Float it. Breathe. Option to grab. Gaze down. Hands to the mat. Turn. Pivot high plank. Or you can stay on your knees for children under there. Your choice to the back of the mat. Take a look forward. Step walker hop through to a seat. Rearrange the legs, left one in front, fold. Sweep to the left, nice big circle all the way around. And land in the middle. Lift your chest, lift your butt, slide your right leg back. Walk your hands in, lengthen the chest. Take one little bow in your pigeon pose. Plant the palms, tuck the back toes, three-legged dog, send that left leg high. Bend the knee, flip the dog over if you want to here. Take it back around, left foot all the way outside. Drop the hips for the lunge, one exhale. Step up off the back foot, squat, Adasana. Hands down. Good. Left foot steps back. Drop to the knee. Swing. Right leg open. Both knees hit the mat. Stand up. Camel through the middle. Smooth these movements out. Release. Exhale. Fall to the right. Extend through the left. Gaze down, hands to the mat, pivot and vinyasa through. Pull your heart center up and exhale. Release, now listen close. Right knee is gonna pull forward right into your pigeon. Heart center comes up. We'll take one last little sequence here around the mat. We're gonna sit down on the right hip completely. Left leg comes around from behind. Hook that ankle outside your knee. Left knee is up, and that's where you're gonna hook your right elbow. Again, we're just constantly twisting and changing direction here. Twist is to the left for three, two, and one. Unwind, take it around to the right. Both hands, again, flat on the ground. I'm going to lift my butt and step wide. So what does that mean? Lift your butt and step wide. <laughs> right into prasarita. Now this one you might have to step back on your mat a little bit. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but once you get upside down in your forward fold, just hang loose, shake it out. Walk your hands around toward the back of the mat again. All 10 toes are gonna to pivot with you. Take a little pyramid stretch over your right shin for a breath. 
You're just folding over nice, long, straight legs. Then look forward and move to half moon. Little bend in your, in your right knee as you shift your weight. Pick up the left side and breathe. Open and stack. Hips and shoulders, all five of your left toes pointed out to the side. Take a little weight out of your bottom hand if you'd like. And breathe. Three, two, both hands to the ground. Dive, standing split, hold that. That feels good, you stay right there or maybe you wanna take a couple hops off that bottom foot and just see where your handstand is at today. <laughs> maybe you don't have much of a handstand today and that's okay too. Both feet will make their way back to the mat eventually. Here's your final full vinyasa. Take it up to the top. Stretch, inhale. Nice and long, exhale, fold. Half lift and lengthen. All the way through, high to low. Adding any little extra movements there. Left knee pulls forward to pigeon. Inhale, chest comes up, you take a deep breath in. On the exhale, sit down on that left hip. All your weight shifts, right leg comes around from behind. Twist, left elbow hooks. So the twist is going to the right now. Lengthen and revolve deeper on the breath out. Three, two, and one. Take it around to the other side, little counter twist, and we're planting the hands because we're gonna unwind right back around. Pick up your booty, step your left foot out. Good. Make an adjustment to get both feet back on your mat. Line up your fingers with your toes and exhale, think about putting the crown of your head on the mat. If it touches, set it down and lift the feet. Working through a tripod or just floating the feet up to headstand if you want one. If you don't, that's okay. Chest expansion is a nice variation. Lock the fingers together or stretch the hands in front of you and drop the chest. To open up the shoulders either way. Three, two, and one. Hands and feet are back on the ground. We're walking around to the front. Pivot to Parajuotanasana, that's pyramid. Pushing through your heels, stretching through the hamstrings, getting ready for half moon. We'll look up toward this left corner of the mat. That's where the left hand's gonna go so that we've got room to open the pose, right? Don't let your foot curl up there, that standing foot. You need five flat toes pressing down and then right toes are out to the side. Breathe, 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 breathe. Three, two, standing splits, hands down, right leg higher, or maybe a couple little hops off that bottom foot. Just checking in, seeing how you feel about hand standing. Like I said, some days it's there, some days it's not. And then when you're ready, both feet to the mat. Inhale, lengthen. This time on your exhale, crouching curl, drop your hips. Take them all the way down. Bottoms of the feet come together. And just relax for a few moments in Baddha Konasana. Let a little roundness into your spine. You guys stay put, move sideways for these finishing postures. Okay, roll up, tilt your head back, take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale it out your mouth. And then sit tall and extend the legs. And we're gonna roll the spine again, hinge from the hips, Hollow out the low belly, take it all the way down. Nice and easy. Onto your back. Bring your knees in for a squeeze. Rock gently. Right there. Cross the low back a few times. Extend 
the legs up toward the ceiling. <sighs> Point in, flex your feet, roll your ankles around. Now if your neck or your lumbar spine do not care for plow pose, then don't do it. It's just that easy. <laughs> I think it takes most of us a really long time to learn those lessons that, you know, not every yoga posture is for every body. So if you are up for plow, then roll your butt back. If you're not up for plow, stay where you're at here and just let the legs dangle or maybe take a little reclining straddle pose or hold the knees or the feet for a couple different versions of happy baby. Plow, friends, once you're back here, hands can come to the low back. You can take that up to a shoulder stand if you'd like, or maybe you just want to stay in plow. My favorite version is to reach my fingers back and grab my toes and just do more of an upside down forward fold. You can tell I'm not really on my neck anymore. I'm kind of on my shoulder blades. So that's a nice in-between. Either way, at some point, we're all going to meet back in a little happy baby here. After you've rocked that happy baby out, if you feel like you need to put a little finishing twist on the end of this, go right ahead and do so. Or you can skip the twisting and just get your body relaxed for Shavasana. Maybe you need a back bend, whatever the case may be. Create your own little pathway here to final relaxation. And that's where we'll meet in Shavasana. No tension left in the body, shake it all out. No control of the breath any longer, so we can let that go by taking a great big inhale once again through the nose. And exhale out the mouth. And there you have it. Please, I encourage you to stay resting here in Shavasana for as long as you would like, but at least a few minutes. You imagine running a marathon and then right before you hit the finish line, you just stepped off and never crossed over, right? That's, that's like doing a really great yoga practice and then you don't take Shavasana. Give your body time to soak up all that amazing information. Give yourself time to appreciate your body, to be happy and grateful for getting on your mat today. Happy and grateful to have a healthy body to move around in, and I am happy and grateful for you as always. Thank you guys for hopping on. I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy your day. Namaste. See you soon.